Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to discuss the cult mentality and indoctrination of the Watchtower. And I thought I would discuss this because we see and hear the words cult and indoctrination all over the internet, all over social media. But what's it really all about? What does it mean? Well, in recent times, cult religions have become synonymous with apocalyptic and doomsday end of world teachings. But what exactly is a religious cult and how can defining one ensure that a person never ever joins one? And more importantly, if you are in a religious cult and you've woken up to this reality and wanting to leave, how can you do so with minimal damage and detox from the poison that has been injected into you? I ask this question because for 35 years I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses and I was completely indoctrinated with its teachings and its beliefs. And upon my departure, I have experienced very negative consequences. Before we begin, though, I'd like to start by saying the self-appointed leaders of the Watchtower believe that they were directly chosen by Jesus Christ as the faithful and discreet slave mentioned in Matthew 24, 45. And they were to give spiritual food to Jehovah's Witnesses that is supposedly based on the Bible. In reality, the spiritual food that they give has proven to be like literal processed food in that it might contain minimal goodness, but it has very, very little nutritional value. And by that, I mean the governing body teaches fundamental truths, a little goodness, if you like. However, they lace these minimal truths with death dealing poisonous doctrines that slowly damage and eventually kill people spiritually over time. This is one of one of the things that religious cults do. But let's dive in and discuss one area that defines a religious cult, that area being indoctrination. And let's see if Jehovah's Witnesses measure up to the points that I bring out. <clears throat> First of all, though, the word cult is a term in most contexts pejorative for a group of people which is typically led by charismatic and, as I've already mentioned, self-appointed leaders who tightly controls its members. It requires unwavering devotion to a set of beliefs and practices which are considered deviant or outside the norms of society. Jehovah's Witnesses fit this description. For example, Upon meeting or listening to members of the governing body speak as leaders of the Watchtower, one would think they're charming, even alluring. Indeed, many Jehovah's Witnesses are in awe of these men and unwittingly perpetuate the obvious Messiah complex this group of men believe they have. As I've mentioned in previous posts, in their own New World Translation Bible, they have referenced themselves as a substitute for the Christ, and that another person's salvation, in particular another Jehovah's Witness um, salvation, depends on being loyal to this group of men. By elevating themselves to the same level as our Lord Jesus, the governing body can then control its followers with relative ease. Religious cults indoctrinate their members, which is basically a process used in societies to shape and influence a person or people's beliefs and behaviours through indoctrination. I picked seven elements of the indoctrination process which I'd like to explain. And the first one is at the beginning of when a person comes into contact with one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So this is referred to as the crossroads. And this is where individuals are presented with a choice that will define their beliefs and values. Where Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned, when the public is presented with the opportunity to go through a Watchtower publication or a book entitled Enjoy Life Forever, a few universal fundamental truths or a little bit of goodness is introduced and discussed with the promotion 
of the fact that the Bible study course is free without obligation. So this normally pulls people in to agree to a free Bible study. And of course, Jehovah's Witnesses are very, very adept at contacting people that are going through trauma in their lives. They've lost somebody in death. They're, they've got an addiction or they're just very, very vulnerable and are looking for hope and support from others. And so Jehovah's Witnesses and many of them, this isn't to say that many Jehovah's Witnesses aren't beautiful people. They are, they are lovely, uh, well-meaning. Um, how can I put this? Yeah, they're well-meaning in that they care for people and they honestly think that their teachings and beliefs will benefit others. And to a, to a degree it does because of the fundamental truths that they bring in from the Bible. It's what they do with the Watchtower Doctrine in with Bible teachings that is the, the thing that does the real harm, even though most Jehovah's Witnesses don't know this. They don't know that they're teaching a false gospel overall. But anyway, the second element of the indoctrination process is what we call the soft cell. So before a Bible study program takes place with a Bible student, the baptised active Jehovah's Witnesses who attend five meetings twice a week are also indoctrinated. And then they are taught very persuasive techniques that gradually introduce and normalise certain beliefs to those who they meet in the community. Whilst at the same time, the student will become as the study progresses, the weekly study they normally have, as that progresses, the student will become more isolated as the indoctrination of the watchtower continues. Moving on to element three. So once the soft cell has been successful, a new reality starts to be experienced by the potential Jehovah's Witness student. And this normally involves the creation of an alternate reality or a worldview that promotes a desired ideology. Jehovah's Witnesses and their teachings regarding the interpretation of the Paradise Earth is very appealing and convincing to people. Indeed, I was convinced it, it appealed to me 35 years ago and I've only just left the organisation at the beginning of last year. So the appeal uh, was very um, real for me living in a paradise earth as taught by Jehovah's Witnesses. And so when they talk to people in the community about these wonderful things, and don't get me wrong, I believe that there will be a paradise earth uh, because the Bible teaches that, but it's the Watchtower Doctrine that's woven into this actual fundamental truth that is the most damaging to somebody who starts a Bible discussion with them. But once the person is reeled in and they agree to going through the Enjoy Life Forever publication, well, then the instructor feeds the student all of the things that are in this publication on a weekly basis. So it's almost like uh, the uh, student is being spoon fed everything, all the doctrination, indoctrination policies and beliefs that are outlined in the Enjoy Life Forever book. And even though the publication is littered with scriptural references and video um, links that you can click on if you decide to study the book with Jehovah's Witnesses digitally, so it's interactive, it's very, very impressive. What's happening is it's, it's the doctrines of Watchtower that are laced in this publication that indoctrinates the student. They may use the Bible, but it's the book, and they'll call it a Bible study, but it's the book, the Enjoy Life Forever book, that is um, the publication that reels people in. And, you know, they study this book weekly, and so they're well on their way to becoming one of Jehovah's Witnesses. The fourth element is around what we call the dear leader, the leaders of the watchtower, the governing body. The dear leader represents 
the charismatic and authoritative figure who leads and embodies the ideologies of their teachings and their doctrines. So at present, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses are the main decision-making process um, and they profess to be guardians of the doctrine, of their doctrine or God, the acronym God, which kind of suits because that's who they believe they represent. And these self-appointed men are responsible for controlling 8.5 million people around the world, 8.5 Jehovah's Witnesses, by the way that they teach their doctrines and their beliefs and the way that they enforce their policies. They continually preach that they are Jehovah's spokesmen on earth and that listening to them and obeying them is the same as listening to Almighty God, as it will mean salvation for their followers. The governing body makes its members feel special and that they are part of something bigger than themselves, which is typical um, cult indoctrination. And so their followers adhere very closely to these instructions, which is also coming under the control and indoctrination of these men and thus removing any individuality of the follower. So who the person was before they started having Bible discussions with Jehovah's Witnesses. As time goes on, the person's individuality or the essence of who they actually are starts to disappear as they become more indoctrinated. Element five, all cults, they um, bring in or create an external threat or an adversary to reinforce loyalty and unity amongst its followers. And it's no secret that the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses verbally and in written form through their publications at conventions, at assemblies, as well as on the JW.org website, state that the world outside of Jehovah's Witnesses is satanic and it has nothing to offer Jehovah's Witnesses should they be tempted to go into the world. And so this vice-like grip the men have over their followers regarding this area of indoctrination is very strong and the governing body use their plausible explanations from their bible and their charismatic personalities to appeal to local congregations that indeed the world is run by satan and anything or anybody to do with the world is at the very least wicked one example the governing body focus on is controlling the Jehovah's Witnesses youths and they do this by highlighting that they're in the last days of the last days of the final part of the last days and they will um, tell the youth of Jehovah's Witnesses not to get a higher education in fact it's very frowned upon but that they should use their youth to serve Jehovah in areas like construction work and pioneering because the end is any day now, which they've been literally saying for decades. But we know that um, getting a higher education is most definitely frowned upon within Jehovah's Witnesses. Element six, this covers peer pressure. So with regards to Jehovah's Witnesses, and here I'm not only relating to the governing body, but locally at congregational level too. Here we have more often than not an unhealthy influence exerted by peers or groups of people, i.e. people who fit in or display sycophant behaviours where the leaders, i.e. the governing body or local elders in charge can manipulate these weak-willed individuals to carry out orders and to mistreat innocent people if they're not already doing it themselves. Innocent people are normally authentic individuals and have nothing to hide. They will also stand up for themselves if they disagree with the mistreatment or if something is not right or in agreement with the Bible. This group of people are logically minded and question things with a critical eye. This is frowned upon 100% within Jehovah's Witnesses and nine times out of ten authentic people eventually end up leaving the cult and become ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. 
element seven, we can't get away from these descriptions, especially where the Watchtower are concerned, a sociopathic narcissist. Well, this element does represent, in terms of cults, a leader who displays narcissistic and sociopathic traits. They use manipulation and exploitation to maintain power. And all I'm going to say here is <laughs> I don't want to get the blame for single-handedly using up all the available cyberspace on the internet because that's what would happen if I was to list every single manipulation and exploitative traits that this organisation employ. We'd be here for years and years and years. But all I will say is just look what's happening, what has happened with the Watchtower in the past and even more recently. In the past, you know, they have changed prophetic dates at least six times and added Almighty God's name to unfulfilled prophecies. They steal everlasting life away from its members by getting its followers to practice disobedience in the rejection of Jesus' body and shed blood, which he commanded all his followers should partake of. The governing body admit they're not infallible or even inspired of God and that they make mistakes. But we know true prophets of the past have always been backed by God and they've never made a mistake because the messages actually came from God himself. These men are openly admitting that they get things wrong. So if they get things wrong as cult leaders, why should anybody listen to them? Why should anybody believe what they say if they keep flip-flopping on very, very important issues to do with the Bible and to do with one's relationship with God? Well, the thing is, is that you know, they, the, their followers still believe them. This is how good and clever, this is how good the governing body are. And they're very, very clever at just pulling the wool over people's eyes and people buy it. And so they carry on. I mean, why break something that's not broken? Look at the radical changes that they've applied to dress and grooming recently, only a few days ago, the treatment of disfellowshipped people without even mentioning Jesus, not once. And he's supposed to be the head of Jehovah's Witnesses congregations. They hardly mention Jehovah at all. But then they make such statements like the governing body have decided, the governing body think, the governing body want to, etc. It's a governing body, governing body, governing body, governing body, and they throw Almighty God a bone. They don't even mention Jesus Christ, our Lord. Shouldn't those points alone be a red flag to people that are still in this organisation? A red flag in terms of the penny should be dropping or starting to drop in waking up to these God-dishonouring men and the way that they are just having a laugh at everybody's expense because they make things up as they go along. And yet, because they're so clever and cunning at lying and deceiving, the ones that are still in believe every word that they, th that they think and they say. In fact, these ones still left in think that all of this deceit is amazing, attributing the mind games that the governing body plays and the changes that they make they apply it to, oh, look how loving God is. Look how merciful he is. I mean, it's it's unbelievable, really, when you think about it, that people still buy in to all of these lies and deceit because that's how they've been programmed. And what I want to say is, in my personal experience, is that as far as I'm concerned, my critical thinking mind that part of my brain was in a coma for 35 years because of all the indoctrinations, because of all their teachings, because of their enforcement, because of the tight grip that these men, the governing body, who claim to be Christ brothers still on earth, employ. And it's nothing more than control, domination 
And let's be honest, at the moment, this organisation are being scrutinised because the common consensus now is that they're in survival mode. All they're bothered about is the image of Jehovah's Witnesses, the brand Jehovah's Witnesses and the financial status. When you look at what's happening all over the world, governments and court systems are looking very, very closely at this organisation because of its inhuman and unloving uh, teachings and practices, especially in regards to shunning individuals who have made up their, their minds to leave. Um, they're treated in the most disgusting manner, people that leave. They're shunned. And now the governing body wants, even though they've relaxed their um, policy on disfellowshipping, in that you can say a greeting to somebody who's disfellowshipped, somebody like me, who's come completely away from the twisted and demonic teaching, teachings that they uh, believe and endorse to their members, I don't want to be part of that anymore because it doesn't honour God and it doesn't honour his son, the way that this organisation go about um, enforcing their policies and beliefs on innocent people that are still left in. And there we have it, friends, the elements of indoctrination. I'm sure that there's more elements that we could add to this process, but it's very evident that these processes are rampant within the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses, the religious cult of Jehovah's Witnesses. The governing body continue to shape an individual's beliefs, values and behaviours to ensure that their followers conform to the ideologies and thus remain under their control. In my next video, I want to discuss practical suggestions for those who are waking up and wanting to leave Jehovah's Witnesses and what to expect. Until then, please take care, continue to show love to one another and be forgiving.